This video will review multi-dimensional integrals. Okay, we'll start by looking at uh, reminding ourselves of how integrals work in one dimension. So we have f of x equals 6 sine 3x, and we want to compute the definite integral from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, well the integral of sine is going to be negative cosine, so that's going to work out, but we have sine of 3x here. So uh, if, we, if we solve this integral, you'll find that what this ends up giving us is negative 2 cosine 3x, because if we take the chain rule on this, we'll, no we'll notice that we get this same function here. So we're going to take the value of this uh, function at pi over 3 and subtract its value at 0. So we get negative 2 cosine 3 times pi over 3 minus negative 2 cosine 3 times 0. So we can factor out a negative 2. Negative 2 occurs in both of these terms here. So I'm going to factor that out. We get negative 2 times cosine of 3 times pi over 3 gives us pi. 3 times 0 gives us 0. So we have negative 2 times cosine pi minus cosine 0. All right, so we have cosine of pi, uh, that's cosine of 180 degrees, which is negative 1, so I got a negative 1 in there. Then we have cosine of 0, which is 1, and then the negative sign switches that, so I get a negative 1 there. So I get a negative 2 times negative 1 minus 1, or a 2 times negative 2, which gives us a final result of 4 for this definite integral. Okay, so that's in one dimension. So how do we extend this when we want to integrate in multiple dimensions? All right, so let's say we have this function f of x, y. This is equal to, say, 7x cubed y squared. All right, and I want to find out, uh, in one dimension, this was the area under the curve. So this is the area between our function and x equals 0 along this region from 0 to pi over 3. So in two dimensions, the analog here would be volume under the surface. So I have a square from negative 1 to 1 in y, and from 0 to 3 in x, and I want to know what volume does my the surface of my function make under this xy plane here. All right, so that'll be the integral from negative 1 to 1 with respect to y times integral from 0 to 3 with respect to x of our function 7x cubed y squared. Okay, I could equally well write this as integral from negative 1 to 1 dy, integral from 0 to 3 dx, 7x cubed y squared. Where typically the convention would be going from inside to outside for all of the uh, variables of integration with respect to all their bounds. Okay, one way I could do this is to factor this into two separate integrals because when I'm integrating with respect to one variable, the others are treated as constants. So if I can, I can factor these two uh, integrals into two integrals of one dimension, and that makes things a lot easier to work with. So here I have y squared dy, that depends on y, so I could factor that out. And I have 7x cubed dx, that depends on x, and I could factor that out. And additionally, the 7 is just a constant with respect to both variables, so I could factor that out completely. So I have 7 times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of y squared times the integral from 0 to 3 of x cubed with respect to their respective variables. Okay, so the integral of y squared is 1 3rd y cubed by the polynomial rule. The integral of x cubed is 1 4th x to the 4th by the polynomial rule. This, this is evaluated from negative 1 to 1, this one from 0 to 3. So I get 7 times uh, 1 3rd times 1 cubed is 1 3rd uh, times, let's see, or I'm a, sorry, factoring out the 1 3rd there, which is a constant, factoring out the 1 4th there, which is a constant. So then I just have y cubed. Uh, for at 1 minus y cubed of negative 1. So I have 1 cubed minus negative 1 cubed. 
Then I have 3 to the 4th minus 0 to the 4th, those two terms there. So I get 7 times a third times a fourth times 1 cubed is 1 minus negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 1 minus negative 1 is 2. And I get 3 to the fourth is 9 squared, which is 81. Minus 0 to the fourth is 0, so I get 81 there. And when you work and simplify out everything here, what you get is 189 over 2. So that's the volume under this surface where this function forms a surface above or below the xy plane here. Okay, alternatively, what you could do uh, instead of factoring is just uh, do the integrals one by one from inside to outside. So I could have this integral here, integral from 0 to pi dy, 0 to pi dx, sine x times sine y. So I'd have the integral of doing the inside integral with respect to x first. This sine y is a constant. I can factor it out. So I get the integral of 0 to pi sine y times the integral 0 to pi sine x dx, all of that dy. So the integral of sine x is going to be negative cosine x. And then evaluating that at pi and at 0. So the negative, so the cosine of pi 180 degrees is negative 1 times the negative sign here we get a 1. Cosine of 0 is going to be 1 and then there's a negative sign so we got a negative negative 1. So all of that is going to give us a 2. So we get this whole integral on the inside here became a 2. We can factor that out and then we get integral 0 to pi of sine y dy. And that is just the same integral that we did here with respect to x. So that integral is also going to be a 2. So we get 2 times 2, which is 4. So either approach will work. You can either try to factor out the integral and do two separate integrals, or you can take do the integrals from the inside to the outside or in any order that you choose. But in any case, they should give you the same result and give you the volume under the surface in however many dimensions your function is.